Hello, how are you? Uh, my name is Marta Borras. I'm a PhD student here in the UPC. And I'm going to present the second part of the hands-on training of today. Um, well, as Alejandro told you, uh, what we are trying to do now is to analyze uh, the signals that we have already recorded. We, we won't analyze these signals um, itself. We will analyze the signals of the data set that we were talking about uh, later. So the subject, what they did was uh, exactly the same as we, we have already done now. So uh, in this, uh, you, you will be able to, to know how uh, to analyze these kind of signals. So today, uh, what, what I want is for you to be uh, here with me and to try to, um, to do this analysis yourself. Um, I will help you, of course, and I, I have provided you uh, with some codes in order to, to make it easier for you and, and also to, to let you how to learn how to do this uh, analysis. So what, what we're going to see today, first I will uh, this, describe a little bit the data base, the data set. Uh, you have already know it, but uh, just in case you you weren't uh, seeing this this uh, the Alejandro's um, explanation, and then I will explain you how to detect the movement onset of of a signal of an EEG signal. I will explain it later how how to do it. I will show you also uh, a little bit so uh, the purposes that we did with this. EEG signal, uh, just super brief because um, my colleagues here did explain it yesterday. And finally, we will go to the movement related cortical potentials and uh, event related desynchronization synchronization analysis, which is uh, for what we are we're here for today. Uh, okay, so the data set that we will analyze is the what well, the ones that you have already know it's the the same as as we have already recorded um but today what we will uh, see is only one subject as you know um in this data but in this database we had uh, 15 subjects uh, with 10 runs and um six different movements uh, today we will analyze only one subject uh, with 10 runs and uh, only two movements, which will be uh, elbow flexion and extension. We will join these two movements and we will um, analyze together, together, because uh, we have already seen before um, this, this, the analysis of both of them uh, is, they are uh, more or less, uh, they, they give us more or less similar uh, results. So we, we, we will join them in order to obtain more trials. So in total, we will have uh, 12 trials for, for both movements for each run. So we'll, we will have 120 uh, trials. This, this will be an important information um, afterwards. So the first part, uh, and probably an, uh, more, one, one of the most important parts uh, is how to detect the movement onset. Uh, as you know, um, the movement, re the potentials related to the movements are, uh, as, it, as its, its names uh, describe, uh, are related to the movement. So we want to know uh, when the movement happens inside the EEG signals, no? So, uh, if you, if we, when we have the EEG, when we have when when rec record the EEG, uh, we can know when the stimulus happens, since we we uh, synchronize the the CCOPA in this case, and we it uh, sends us uh, the exact moment in which this stimulus is happening, but we don't know when the movement happens because we know if if we see the the stimulus and we move this is uh, it there, there are more or less one second or one second and a half seconds after 
after um, seeing the stimulus for for me to do the movement. No? So we we don't know when when the movement is happening, and this is important because we want uh, the trials of the EEG aligned to the to the movement onset, because otherwise uh, we could have um, we go f uh, we could um, uh, remove important information from these trials when we average these trials. So uh, to detect the movement onset, uh, we uh, need a signal which is related to the movement. Uh, in the case of the data set that we had, what the signal that we had was an accelerometer signal. But it could be also a, dynam a dynamometer signal or, or a EMG signals. But the important thing here is that these signals have to be synchronized with the EEG. So we need to uh, record them simultaneously and synchronize it. And OK, so as I, as I said, uh, what the signal that we will analyze today to detect the movement on set is the accelerometer signal, because it's the ones that we had. So I want you first to run the, uh, sorry, uh, how many of you are following this, uh, are trying to run this, this um, Okay, I'll try to do the analysis. All of you or, yeah? Can you raise your hand, please? Okay, so if you have any trouble in some point, you just tell me and, and we can stop or I'll get, I can show you results or some uh, or anything that you need, okay? Uh, then I, I proceed to, to do this one. Uh, so run the first section here. If you run it, you will be able to see that the signal that we have uh, is an accelerometer signal with uh, is on a structure. Yeah, you, you have already run it. Okay, so we have an a structure uh, signal that contains the data of the accelerometer and uh, sorry, it is important to, uh, to have the, the correct folder here in the MATLAB, okay? And 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 I forget. Uh, you have to uh, introduce here uh, your path of the data where you ha have saved this data. This is this is important also. If otherwise, it, it won't work. <laughs> okay. Okay, so if you have introduced this path and you have um, here the current folder uh, with all the functions, it should work. So uh, once you run this section, you can see the signal. Uh, it, this is an accelerometer signal. Uh, for uh, we are we are going to analyze only one trial uh, now. I sorry, one run, which we we contain. It contains six trials per movement. Uh, in order for you to to know how to do this detection. Um, okay, so the signal accelerometer we have the data, which looks like this, and here we can see the one of the one of each trial. One, two, uh, these are uh, elbow extension and these are elbow flexion. Okay, and with the what what we want to detect is this point here, which is the uh, starting of the movement. Okay, here is when the sub started to move, and th these are the points that we want to detect, and this will be the points that will be the the movement onset um, uh, sam sam samples, okay? So also, we also have the information of when the stimulus happen. As I said, uh, the stimulus are uh, synchronized with the EEG. And here we have uh, the, sam the sample of each stimulus, which should appear uh, more or less uh, right before the movement. Okay, so the, sam the sample here should be um, here. The second sample should be more or less here, okay? And this is an important information because it will um, help us to, to detect this movement onset. 
Okay, uh, are you following? Because I, I, I yes. Okay. Um, okay. So now, I I will ask you how if you have an idea, knowing this information, of how would you identify this movement onset? Do do you have any idea? And uh, any I don't know suggestions. Okay, it's okay. I, I will explain uh, what we did. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm sure that there there, are, uh, there is no uh, one single solution here. So we we want only to detect uh, one inter point of of interest. No. So uh, what we did it was to first first of all for each event event which are. For each event, I mean these events, okay? We identify a three second window, which means for each event here, sorry, for each event, we identify this window here, okay? And this window represent, is represented here, okay? This is the event um, when the event happened. And here, uh, represent the, the start of the movement okay so what we did was to calculate the derivative of this uh, signal which is this one and we find where the signal starts to rise to raise so we find this point okay and to determine the exact point we ensure that the value found was the the, the value that we wanted uh, by checking that it is lower than the next point and higher or equal than the point before. So if we detect the point here, which is where the der derivative starts to raise, which would be more or less here, if we want this point, we, we want to go down until here. And this is the point that will be the movement onset sample. Okay? So now that you have been super in super attention, I want you to uh, modify this movement onset detection function, which is, uh, sorry, which is that one. If you open it, you will see that there are missing parts. Here there's one missing part, and here there's the second one. Okay? So I want you, first of all, to find the window that I was talking about, this window. Okay? So, you need to complete it. How, how we can complete it? We want to find a three second window starting on the stimulus um, point, okay? Knowing that we are doing it for each trial. So we, we upload the signal point stimulus, we find a single point stimulus for each trial, and we save a window from this point to this point plus three seconds. We know, uh, you have to know also that the thing that we are blowing also the uh, sampling frequency, okay? Which will be the helpful to calculate these three seconds. I give you two minutes. Remember that it is a window. It is a vector. It should be a vector of three seconds.
30 seconds. Yeah, okay. Uh, once you have these values um, vector, you can complete the second part, which is the if loop. Uh, here, hit, this, this is an easier one. You just have to find the value of the derivative of, um, of each trial, which is important. No, sorry. Of each um, sa sample, sorry. So you have to find the derivative of each of each sample that is higher than a threshold. This threshold, um, if you have seen this function, um, we are up, um, uploading it. So I, I already gave you this this threshold. It was an experimental threshold, so you already have it. So you can complete it too. And once you, go, you, once you complete it, you can uh, go to the main uh, live script and run this section. Okay. And if you run this section, you should be obtaining something like this. Sorry, it is plotting. So if you're on this section, you should be obtaining some, something like this. Uh, if someone have get it, have got it? Yes? Anyone? Yes? Okay, for the ones that uh, cannot find the answer, I will give you it. So the values um, to know the vector, uh, you can see here. Pay attention, please. Uh, we find the stimulus, which will be the first sample, and then we save uh, a vector from this stimulus to this stimulus plus three seconds, which is three. Uh, multiplied by sampling frequency, okay? And in the second part, uh, if this the derivative of it, this sample is higher than these thresholds that, that I already gave you, um, the, we, we go inside this loop, okay? So these are the answers. If you uh, complete it, um, you will be able to obtain the results that I, I have already showed you. Yeah. Okay. So once we know how to detect this movement onset, this was just for six trials. I will give you the movement onsets of all the trials. I already done this um, uh, job for you. So uh, I will give it to you. Uh, now we will proceed to the EG, which is the, why we are here. Um, I will briefly explain what we did before um, doing what we're going to do to obtain the potentials that we want to analyze. Uh, first of all, what we bump pass filter the signal um, from 0 0.3 to 70 hertz. Uh, and we also applied a, a notch filter in order to uh, eliminate the uh, noise um, for the line by line signal. And we also uh, did uh, bad channels de detection and rejection. We applied an independent component analysis, as my colleagues explained it to you, uh, in order to uh, eliminate um, and reject artifact components. We segment, and after that, we segment uh, the, the signals into trials. In, um, in function uh, aligned to the stimulus, and then we will uh, use the movement onset. Okay. 
And finally, we did a bad trial resection uh, detection. Sorry. Okay, so uh, now we will move to the movement related cortical potentials. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I will do a brief explanation of what uh, movement-related cor cortical potentials are. Uh, I know that you were this morning here and you were super attentive here to my colleagues, so it will be super brief. Um, the movement-related cortical potentials lo looks like this figure here. Um, as the these these are related to the movement onset, so it appears one second point five or or two seconds more or less before this movement onset, and it ends more or less uh, one second after the movement onset. Its amplitude is commonly between five and thirty microvolts, and it's and it occurs uh, in frequencies around zero to five hertz. Um, the, these potentials is mainly located in CZ, which is um, the motor cord, uh, the, the electrode that uh, represents the motor cortex the most. Uh, to obtain a meaningful uh, movement rate cortical potential, we need to average, average uh, a number of trials that uh, are significant. Okay, and it is important to know how many trials we need because, as you have seen before, uh, to record a, a high number of trials is tedious for the the subject because it he have he have to stay in, in front of the screen doing some movements, which is um, um, it's tedious and it costs. Okay, so. Um, it is important to know that what what are the minimum number of trials that we need uh, to obtain a meaningful uh, potential. Okay, and this uh, we will talk about later. So now I want you to uh, run this section here. The second the second section. Okay. Running. Okay, so uh, first of all, I want you to introduce um, the EEG signal itself. Okay, here that that's the signal that we obtain after recording these ten runs. Okay, and here we can see that the signal is called EEG. Uh, inside the signal, we have uh, the information of the ten runs. In the first run, for example, which is inside of each run, we can see the EG data, which is 61, which are 61 channels. That is the is that what we have, and um, the sum the number of samples that we have. Here, you, if you remember, we have um, one 120 uh, trial. Uh, sorry, we have 12 trials. Here inside, because uh, each run we con we had twelve trials. Okay, so in inside this sample we have twelve trials, and as we can see here, uh, the second the the events uh, part, we can see the information of each uh, trial. Okay, so here we have twelve trials, and this uh, the columns of these uh, events it means that for uh, for example the first column is the ki the kind of uh, movement that we we are uh, analyzing okay so if there are if there, are, there is a two we are talking about uh, elbow extension if there is a one we are talking about uh, elbow flexion okay the second uh, column we there uh, these are the stimulus information, okay? When the stimulus happen, the samples of the stimulus. The third one uh, are the movement onset, and the fourth one are the movement offset, okay? And finally, it is important also, uh, we, we upload this trials okay matrix, which is a, a matrix that is composed by ones and, and zeros, uh, in which meaning the meaning of the ones uh, 
are the good trials and the zeros are the bad trials okay so here we can we can see um, a matrix in which for each electrode we uh, determine, determine if the for this electrode and for this trial um, this trial is good okay so if you have one trial uh, and 61 electrodes for each trial we we can know if this trial of in this electrode was was good or we have to reject it okay and this matrix we will use it um to to the movement rate cortical analysis okay so if you run this section um you no you will have a problem here because uh, you have to now uh, modify the movement related the mrcp definition function because if you open it here in this function what we what we are doing in this function is to calculate the movement related cortical potential which is what we're here for today okay so now you will be uh, calculating this movement related cortical potentials okay so uh, if you open this function you can see that we upload here the eg uh, signal the sampling frequency just of trials okay the number of runs and the number of events okay so this matrix what we did here what we do here is for each run uh, sorry for each run we um first don't sample the data okay and following we we filter this data from zero from 0 0.3 to 3 hertz because uh, as i said uh, the movement rate of cortical potential uh, is seen in low frequencies so we have fewer filtering this data before okay so once we have this data filtered what we do what we do is for each trial inside of each, of each event we want to re-reference the signal okay and all once we have re-referenced -refer re this signal we want to sele select the signal the trial that we will use which is uh, the trial inside a window of minus 2.5 to 2.5 seconds uh, aligned with the movement onset okay how we do that we we do that to uh, do a, a, a common average reference what we what we need is to subtract the mean of the, the of all the channels okay the mean of the, the, the average of the information of all the channels eh, in each channel okay so here we have the signal out which is the signal uh, fil the filtered signal um, with all the channels okay and in on this signal we will subtract the mean of this channel of, of each channel vale? ah, sorry uh, the mean of uh, all the channels for each channel and after that we will use this signal to um, select a window from minus 2.5 to 2.5 rated to the movement onset, which is this this value here. Okay, so this is a, a little bit uh, more complex than the last one, but uh, I will let you to try. I, I it's not as com as complex as, as it looks like. Okay, I will let you try two minutes to to do it. No, you include the channel one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and here uh, I I forget I forget to tell it. Uh, 
what people are doing. It's not more than just saying this guy can put it on the camera and so this channel is really good with that kind of all the other no, all the other ones, all the channels. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. The the thing is that we are not including the bad channels, which I forgot I forgot to, to tell you. Because as if you can see here, there there is a loop which from one to the good channels. Okay. So here we are only removing the I uh, we are yeah, we are only considering in the average the the correct channels which are inside the signal outs because I already saved them. Traiem a mitjana dels canals. La de la filtrada a cada canal, eh? Sí, sí, sí. Okay, one one minute left. Okay, uh, I will show you the, the results. So uh, look at the screen now and you, you will be able to see if you have done it correctly. Uh, okay, so as I said, we are subtracting the mean of the signal, the mean of the channels, it, the one, um, the, the first, uh, so yeah, the first dimension of the signal represents the channels. So we are subtracting the mean of this signal for all channels uh, from uh, each channel. I there's a there's one thing that I forgot to tell you that we are looking only for the good channels. Okay, this is, this is important because uh, we we want the mean of only the good channels otherwise we would we would be um, um, adding bad information in, into the uh, good signal okay and then we are um, taking the signal the re referenced signal uh, from minus 2.5 seconds to 2.5 seconds uh, aligned to the movement onset. Okay, I let you um, complete it. Okay, and if you go to the main live script, wait, close. and run this section. Uh, you, you have to look here that we are doing it for only one run because it, it's faster. 
uh, then I will I will well in the in the following section you will upload the the results for all the runs okay because it will be faster okay so here we can see the results the result what we obtain here we are looking at the movement rate the cortical potentials of this elbow and flexion um elbow flexion and extension movements uh, for 12 trials here we only have 12 trials okay and uh, in this patient this um signal is uh well defini definited um but uh, in some other patients uh, with 12 trials we we not always are obtaining this kind of signal okay so if you run the following section here we upload the the data of uh, all the trials all the 120 trials okay and we can see that the movement related cortical looks uh, better than the, the last one okay because we have now uh, 100 more trials okay uh, if you if you see i i told you that we had 120 trials and here uh, we we are plotting 113 trials that's because we uh, we are plotting sorry I, I forget to tell you that we we are plotting the cz channel only okay because it's the main one and in this channel we only have we only had this um 113 good trials okay the other ones were rejected okay so now we can move to the number of trials analysis okay if you run the following section here you you don't have to do anything just run it and you you will see a figure in which i plot uh, the signal for six trials and the same signal for 130 trials okay here we can see that the the shape of the movement rate the cortical potential it's more or less good for in both cases and maybe it's better in for 130 trials but the thing is that if we look into the uh, we, here we are plotting the same uh, the standard error of mean of the data okay so we we are looking into the variability of this data so uh, if we look in the variability of the data we can see that when we use when we are using six trials uh, we have uh, so much uh, much more uh, variability than when we are uh, using 113 trials this will be uh, an important fact when we may when we for example want to uh, do some statistics between different groups or or so okay so we we can we can go to the last part of the movement related cortical potential which is the uh, para, uh, the parameters and the topography of these parameters okay um, the movement rate of cortical potentials are commonly characterized by the, by the maximum of its amplitude which is located here and also by the onset of the wave which is this um, this difference here okay from the past of four, four zero to the maximum okay so if you uh, open if you run this section you it, it won't work again uh, so if you open the mrcp fit calc now i want you to do a more uh, simple uh, proce procedure uh, i want just for, for you to uh, calculate the maximum of the the movement rate the cortical potential but uh, to be robust, what we did was first we we want to find the sample where the this maximum is found, knowing that the maximum is before the movement onset. Is, is, sorry, is 0.5 seconds before the movement onset. So we are looking for a maximum 
inside this function here, uh, this, sorry, this um, uh, matrix here, okay, we are looking for the maximum of this matrix uh, inside the um, the window of 0 0.5 seconds before the movement onset. Knowing that the movement onset is this, okay, because we are not uploading the movement onset. Okay, once we have this maximum, we uh, I will explain it later. I, I will let you to find this maximum, two minutes to find it. Uh, sorry, the the maximum is uh, we are looking it for uh, the media trials matrix because uh, we first um, uh, want the average of each trial, okay? And after averaging each trial, uh, we we obtain this ma media trials uh, matrix, which is composed by sixty one channels per one hundred and sixty samples. Okay, so here. Here we're looking for the maximum of the CZ, which is this value here. And in the samples, we're looking in this window. So we're looking. Are you following it? Uh, from minus 0 0.5 seconds to the movement onset. Okay, so we are looking for, um, yeah, knowing knowing that the movement onset is 2.5. Okay. We can use the max function of the MATLAB. You don't know it. Okay, for the ones that uh, have already found this maximum, we you can uh, average a window around the maximum, which is uh, which will be the feature that we will use to analyze or to plot the the topography. Okay, uh, so here you just have to do an average of the value that we found here, which is. Um, that value, okay, uh, from minus 0 0.1 second to ma plus uh, 0 0.1 second, okay, and this will be the the feature that we will be studying as a maximum uh, movement rate of cortical potential. Yeah. 
the, the window is 0 0.2 in seconds in total from minus 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 okay if, uh, aligned with the yeah aligned with the maximum Did you get it? Are you trying? Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, of course. You look like this. Okay, so I, I will show you the results now. So pay attention here now. Uh, so to find the maximum, we take this media trials matrix in the CZ um, electrode, which is the one that we, we will be um, looking at. And we, we do a window from the the movement onset so 0 0.5 before seconds before the movement onset and until the movement onset okay uh, once we have this maximum what we want is to do a uh, an average of these um, media trials okay of this potential inside the window of the maximum, around the maximum, okay? This is the window around the maximum. So you can copy that. Can you see it good or I can? Do you have it? I will upload these uh, functions also. So if you you are not able to following it now uh, you will be able to to have them uh, completed in the drive afterwards okay so don't worry about it uh, okay so if you run the the section now it should work and the result that you will be looking at is the um, topo topography of this maximum okay so if you run the section you will see this uh, head in which we can see uh, how the max the motor related cortical potential is mainly located in 
CZ electrode, okay? And and yeah, this is the results for all the trials. So, this was the last thing uh, about the movement rate cortical potential. Uh, we are we are finishing this hands of draining. Uh, before finish, we will uh, I will go fast uh, and explain you a little bit about the event related desynchronization and synchronization. So, are you here now? Yeah. If if you if you were not able to to do this um, moment rate the cortical potential part, I will upload. Don't worry about it. You will you will have the functions. Okay. So, uh, so we go to the uh, frequency part. We are going to the event related desynchronization and synchronization, uh, as we explain it this this morning and also this afternoon too. Uh, these are uh, um, a signals that in, uh, are um, represents a lot uh, the potentials of uh, the movement, uh, event-related potentials. Okay, so uh, event-related desynchronization and synchronization looks like this one. We uh, commonly studied them in MO band and in beta band, as we said this morning. And they are also related to the movement onset. Okay. Uh, they are studied in frequency um, band. Okay. So this is important because um, they they are uh, so much that the each study is so much different than the the movement rate the cortical potential ones. Okay. So uh, first of all, I want you to. Uh, run this section in order only to upload the EEG signal. The signal uh, that we will be uh, studying is exactly the same as the signal of the movement rate of cortical potential. Okay, and we also upload the good channel trials, which are the yeah the matrix that I explained before. The same matrix also. So once we have uh, this upload, we can go to the um, Event related desynchronization synchronization analysis. Okay. To to obtain a properly event related desynchronization, uh, sorry, we will focus with the event related desynchronization, okay, today, because we we don't have all the time of the world. So I, I know you want to go home. So um yeah, we will focus only with the with the desynchronization. Okay. Uh, and I will explain briefly how to do the same with the synchronization afterwards. Okay, so uh, to obtain a properly trials to, to get a good event related synchronization signal, uh, we first uh, want to define these trials locked in time uh, between minus 2.5 to 5.5 seconds, as we see here. These are a uh, little bit uh, longer than the movement related cortical potential uh, signals, okay? So we want mm, from minus 2.5 to 5.5 seconds uh, in, uh, aligned to the movement onset again. And uh, once we have these trials, we will filter, we bandpass filter the these um, signals from 8 to 13 in the case of the move and from 14 to 30 in the case of the beta one. Okay, once we have the the field uh, the signal filtered, we re-reference it to a common average, and finally we calculate the the, the we square uh, these signals trial to trial, and once we have all the signals uh, squared, we average this uh, each trials and we obtain something like this. Okay. If you run uh, this uh, section, uh, here you, you don't have to modify anything. Okay, I already done this function. The function, what, what we did we do in this function is exactly what I have already explained it, okay? So uh, if you go inside the function, you will see uh, a lot of loops and everything, which um, explains, uh, it, which is explained by these figures here, okay? So if you run the sanction, and the following one also. 
because here the here it, it's only an example for one run only to make it faster again afterwards if you have any question of um any function you can go uh, you can come here and ask me and i will explain everything that you need okay if you run the figures sections you will see something like this okay those are the averaging um, uh, signals that have been squared okay but here we only have 12 trials because again we only um uh, analyzed have analyzed now um one run okay so what we have already done with the function is the we, we is this figure here this is the beta band and it, this is the move band okay we can see a little um the synchronization but uh once we we uh I, again we only have 12 trials and we would need uh, uh, more trials to to see it better so if you run the following section section you will see the results uh, the same figure for uh, 113 trials okay I, I i forget to mention that what we are looking at now is an a roi a region of interest uh, of of the the EG, okay, of the um, of the scalp, okay, and this is an experimental re region that we have already seen before uh, when we were looking in the topography, okay. So in order to see the best um, event rated desynchronization um, uh, figures, we uh, select this uh, region of interest which are in the case of the move and these electrodes here in the case of the beta one these ones okay so now we can see something more looking like uh, a desynchronization in the move and we can see this uh, squared um and in the beta one we can see it okay we, you have to take in account that the zero is always the movement onset. Okay, so uh, this is this would be the desynchronization, but um, we want uh, uh, the percentage of the synchronization of the signal, which is the the definition of the event-rated desynchronization. So we need to calculate this percentage. How we do that? We take a reference window. Um, from 1.5 to one seconds before the movement onset, okay? And with these reference signals, if you run this section, you uh, what we do is after averaging all the of that all the trials, okay, we uh, we filter the signal first uh, in order to obtain a not uh, as noisy signal as we have it here okay so filtering the signal what we obtain is the orange one okay and once we have filtered the signal we take this reference period we calculate the percentage of the synchronization after normalize the power of the signal okay so this we are doing it here and we obtain the event-related desynchronization for move and for beta band. Okay. Okay. So we are we are um, arriving to the end of the session today. Uh, first of all, I want you to look fast into the number of trials again, because if we use when we use sorry, when we use 113 trials, we can see the blue signal, which is the ones that we have obtained. But when we use only 12 trials, you can see 
what kind of signal we are obtaining. So again, we need an appropriate number of trials to obtain these signals. And in the beta band, it happens more or less the same. Okay. So finally, uh, yeah, now is the last thing that I want you to do today. Okay. So be alert. Uh, I want you to calculate the feature that we are analyzing in the event related that is commonly analyzed in the event related desynchronization, which is the minimum event related desynchronization amplitude. Okay, and how we do that? So uh, knowing that we have these um, trials, sorry, with this ERD uh, structure, uh, we want to calculate the average of a 0.5, a 0.2 seconds window around the movement onset, because we know that the minimum is found around the movement onset, okay? So we are looking for uh, a window of, a window of 0, 0 0.2 seconds around this movement onset. Okay, using the ERD mu and ERD beta signals. Okay, taking account that the both signals are at 61 channels per um, 40 for uh, <laughs> for these samples. Okay, <laughs> so I let you to do it. To me, to it, it's it's similar than the, when we were um, calculating the maximum. We want uh, this window around the, mi the minimum in order to make this feature uh, more robust. Okay. Uncomment this this part. I forget to tell you, but Have you given up or are you trying it? <laughs> the last one. Okay, let's see the solution here. I include the, the omit none to avoid uh, travels here when we average to avoid none numbers. So we are looking for the, as you as I told you, the movement onset is, is located in 2.5 uh, seconds. So we are looking for a window from 0.2 
minus from 2.4 to 2.6, which is a 0.2 seconds window uh, for each trial. We are just looking uh, the average of this window. So once we have it for both mu and beta band, if we run this section, we finally obtain the topography of the event related desynchronization for EPA, for mu band and for beta band. Okay. As you can see here, um, that this desynchronization is located uh, on the on the uh, contralateral hemisphere uh, of the scalp. Okay, so uh, the the patients were moving the right um, uh, arm. So now we can see that the activation that this synchronization desynchronization is mainly located in the left uh, side of the brain. Okay. So, and these are the, the region of interest that we were plotting before. Okay, so that's all about the event related desynchronization. Uh, I will super briefly explain you uh, how can you uh, obtain the event related synchronization, which is the same as the event related desynchronization, but uh, using the movement offset as a reference okay not not as a reference yes zero reference okay so we are aligning this uh this in, these signals into the movement offset and as we can see here there's a synchronization when the uh, movement ends so what we want is to uh, obtain this signal related to the movement offset and uh, in this case, the main fe feature that we are studying is the maximum event related desynchronization, uh, which we will we we will be um, using the same um, way as the event related desynchronization, uh, which is uh, doing a an, a window an averaging a window around the maximum. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope that you enjoy this hands-on training. And if you have any doubt or any question, I'm here to answer.